It's Madden 22 review time. I'm about to talk about the five best things for Madden 22 and the five worst things. This is how I like to do my official reviews every year so I can give you my thoughts on what I think is good about the game, but also what I think is bad about the game to help you make an informed decision on whether or not the game is for you. And of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn the bell icon on if you want to stay up to date with all the latest Madden news and everything else. Starting out with the five best, number one is franchise mode. This is the first time in a long time that franchise mode actually got some love with Madden and got a significant upgrade they finally added back assistant coaches and even gave them skill trees with over 60 different skills you can earn and equip to your staff these skills can help you with upgrading players for progression and regression it can help you with signing free agents and pulling off draft day trades and a whole bunch of other things they also overhauled the game planning system each week so that you can game plan for your opponents you can see advanced stats you can decide what you want to focus on and your goals for the week they also added a new fatigue and health management system as far as your players go so you can determine how hard you want them to practice full pads or half pads how you want them to split the reps between starters and backups so that you can keep your players fresh for longer throughout the year if you push them harder in practice you get more xp but you raise the injury risk as the season goes on if you give them an easier time in practice you get less xp for your players but you have a bigger guarantee of them staying healthy they also redid the scenario engine and changed it to the season engine which now gives you actual good cut scenes within franchise mode where you do press conferences talk to the GM talk to players in the locker room and things like that where you can make decisions to upgrade your team you can talk to the media post and pre-game you can talk to players who are unhappy and the situations actually make a lot more sense and don't feel as stupid as they were for the last couple of years and on top of all of that, they're going to be adding a completely overhauled scouting system in a couple of weeks via an update where you can hire regional and national scouts. You can send them to certain areas, focus them on certain players. You can find out more about players. You're going to have mock drafts and a whole bunch of other stuff that is about 100 times better than the current scouting system that's in the game. Number two on the best list is the new momentum and home field advantage addition to the new consoles. Now, this isn't on last gen, unfortunately, but I do think overall this is one of the best additions to the game because it makes every game feel special every game you have a momentum meter above your scoreboard that can swing in either team's favor based on a variety of things like just getting positive yards getting touchdowns turnovers sacks and everything else every game you have two random m factors on your momentum board and if you swing momentum enough in your favor you can unlock one of them or even both of them and it'll just give advantages or certain boosts to your team or it could just make it harder on the other team in certain situations because momentum is not in their favor so it makes every play every Every game feel more special everything matters if you lose momentum you got to work hard to get it back or else you're going to be at a disadvantage now speaking of advantages there's also home field advantage so the home team is going to have an extra factor on their board which is exclusive to just them for that game because they're at home and you're going to start with this activated so the away team is going to have to make some plays early on to try to get you out of home field advantage and each team has a unique home field advantage so most people think that this is taken from the NCAA games and it kind of was in a way and they took some of that from NCAA but what they did was they built on top of it and they made each home field advantage unique to each team so in Denver for example the away team is going to fatigue a lot faster because playing in the altitude in Denver is actually tough and in Buffalo it's harder to make kicks because it's such a windy city with swirling winds it's a hard place to kick for opposing kickers because they're not used to kicking in it number three on the best list is there are less two-man animations in the game this year and if you don't know what that means simply put when two players get pulled into an animation together where they interact with each other most notably this is seen on catches if you throw up a 50 50 ball and each player is pressing a button an animation kind of brings both of those players together and the outcome is just randomly decided there's not much user control in those situations well they decreased the two-man animations this year and and once again, I've covered this multiple times already. That doesn't mean that two-man animations don't still exist. They do still exist and they do still happen often throughout the game in a variety of different areas. But what they've done specifically with the wide receivers and the defensive backs is they've reduced the amount of them. So they're not happening nearly as much. Yes, they still happen, not as much. And that's a plus because what I'm now seeing more is more user-on-user -user play on 50-50 balls, which is
which is what most people wanted. Whenever people would get mad that the defensive back would always win the 50-50 balls, that's because they were being pulled into a two-man animation that was deciding to let the defensive back win more times than not. Now you have more opportunities to click onto the wide receiver, get him in position, and try to high point the ball. But just like that on defense, you also have that opportunity to click on the defender, get him in position, and go for a swat. And whoever times it best usually is going to win. Now again, yes, two man still happen, but they happen less, and I think that's a big plus for the game. Number four on the list are the playbook and play additions to Madden 22. Now this is an area that last year they really lacked and they did not do a lot of updates in this area, but out of the gate this year, there are 300 new plays, over 300 new plays, multiple new formations, and a lot of playbooks have got switched around. So some playbooks got way better. They got good formations added. They even brought some formations back that they previously took out of the game. And to me, anytime you're adding more plays and more formations, that's a great thing for this game because you get bored running the same stuff over and over. You want new stuff to to try you want new stuff to kind of test out in game you want to put together different unique offenses and when you're giving more plays and formations to the game you're giving people more creativity and that's always a plus so i'm glad that they did that this year and i hope they continue to build on that throughout the year with more playbook updates and number five on the best list is something that you never really can say about a Madden game, at least not too often, and that's that the entire game got updated. No matter what mode you like to play, no matter what way you like to play the game, it got updated. We've seen for years franchise mode hardly get touched. We've seen Ultimate Team go years without getting touched. Last year, franchise mode and Superstar KO, both of them got nothing really new added at launch. This year, you look at franchise mode, it got multiple updates. It's the best franchise mode has been since Madden 12 just off the fact that it has more than it's had over the past eight nine years if you like face of the franchise which I don't think is a great mode and we'll get into that in a second it's got a brand new story to play so if you buy the game for that you've got an entirely new story to play there with some new things within that if you play ultimate team they added a few new cool things in ultimate team if you play the yard they added more locations they added a new campaign they added some new things with the archetype builds if you play superstar KO they brought regular team play back to the game where you can squad up two on two or three v three with real teams like the Packers or the Niners or the Cowboys whereas previously the only way to play squads in Madden was doing it through ultimate team if you're just an online regs head-to-head -head player you've got momentum and home field advantage they added something for every player this year and I think that should be the focus every year how can we update every mode how can we give every type of player some new things to engage with with the game and they did that this year now it's time to talk about the five worst things about Madden 22. These are the reasons you shouldn't get the game if these things are important to you. Number one on the list is face of the franchise. I feel like I have to put this on my worst list every year and it pains me to do it because I have such high hopes for this mode, but it always lets me down. Now I will say this is probably the best that face of the franchise has been in the three years it's been in the game, but that's really not saying much because the bar is so incredibly low that even saying it's the best of the last three years doesn't really say much. The story is a little bit better this year, but once again, it just falls short at delivering any type Type of depth or immersion or really making it feel like it's your story people don't really want a story they want to create their own story they don't want to be forced into a story and the whole selling point about being put in this story was always that well you can make decisions that are going to affect how you proceed through the story but it it, it really doesn't happen much right like there are decisions you can make but they don't really affect anything too much it's very minimal and it just doesn't feel like it's your story it's still limited on the positions you can play of course and and I could be okay with it being limited by positions if everything else in it was good, if the story was good, if the immersion was good, if I felt like I could take that position and really create my own story, but I can't. And on top of that, once again, it's like the buggiest mode in the game. And typically, I don't get too much on the launch day bugs because every single game has those and within a week or two, they're out of the game and they're not going to affect the game anymore. But the problem with the face of the franchise bugs are every year, the face of the franchise bugs make certain elements of the mode just completely unplayable. Like it's hard to be a quarterback in face of the franchise right now because when you try to do drills, the receiver is not on the field. He disappears like the gameplay bugs that are one in a thousand that you, you might see one time and never see it again. I don't care that much about those because they're going to be out of the game and you might see it one time and it's like, whatever, you had a bad game where a bug happened. But in face of the franchise, the bugs happen over and over and they prevent you from being able to actually play the mode the right way. So there's just a bunch of reasons why face of the franchise is not 
a good mode and at this point just take it out and just put superstar mode back in the game give people the basics that they need to create their own story and let people go stop trying to force the story on other people because it's not working Number two on the worst list are defensive coverages, specifically zone coverage. They are absolutely awful. And I think this is only a problem on the newer consoles. I don't think this is a problem for the old consoles at all. But deep blue zones, specifically the deep half zones for cover two and the deep third zones in cover three, just don't play anything. They're the worst I've ever seen to the point where I'm almost positive that it's deliberate because if you test this game, you know that the zones are bad. You see it in 10 minutes of playing. You cannot run a cover two on the new consoles. It'll be a streak on the outside for a touchdown every single time, even on all Madden. With cover three deep zones, you can run streaks past them in certain formations pretty much every time for one play touchdowns as well. I can forgive launch day bugs because they happen to every game and the truth is no matter how much you test, you can never run into that. A player disappearing or a player not being able to be tackled because he gets stuck in a weird animation, you can test over and over and those are things that you could just never have happen while you test. But coverages, you see it every play. You play the game for 10 minutes, not even 10 minutes, and you can see that cover two is not usable. You can see that cover three is really, really bad. I'm not saying I need the zones to play for me, I just need the zones to be in the vicinity of where they're supposed to be so I can click on and make a play but they're so bad now that you can't even click on and make a play because they're literally just running out of the play they're not even staying anywhere near where they're supposed to and I know this is going to be patched I know it's going to be fixed but this shouldn't be a day one issue they shouldn't be this bad and they're so bad and it's so obvious that I actually do think it's deliberate because if you're testing this game and they do test the game and you have other people that they bring in to test the game they know that the zones have been bad they've been bad since the beta and yet they're still bad which makes me think it's a deliberate decision and I just don't understand why. Number three on the worst list gameplay didn't change much whether you're on the old consoles or the new consoles both versions of the game are very similar to the versions of the game last year. Now of course on the new consoles you did get momentum and home field advantage which is technically a gameplay feature you did get some new tackle animations and the reduction of the two man animations but that's really it. A lot of the other stuff they said that they fixed or tweaked really wasn't true again going back to coverages the coverages got worse they said they worked on blocking i feel like blocking in a lot of areas got worse they did speed up the movement and made it a little bit more user friendly than it was last year but it's still very slow and i think clunky in a lot of areas but when i'm talking about just the overall scope of the game right if they're not going to go physics based with more of the interactions then you at least need to be adding more animations so that we're not seeing the same animations play out over and over and over it feels like every sideline catches like one of two animations every tackle is like one of five animations it seems like so you can at least add more to your animation library so different interactions are happening and the game looks more fresh like i said when you look at coverages and blocking in other areas it feels like they went backwards in some areas instead of getting better and then another big thing is they added no new abilities or x factors to the game which is one of the biggest parts of madden now they had no new things in this area which i thought you should at least added a few new things to get excited about and they didn't Number four on the worst list is definitely the announcers. I see this complained about all the time, and I'm a person that doesn't even particularly care that much about the announcers. I don't pay much attention to them. It's not my thing with the game, but even I notice how stale and repetitive it is. So if I'm noticing it, and it's not even something I care that much about, then I know the people that do care about it are completely fed up with it. And I see the complaints day in and day out about they're just tired of the announcers. It's nothing against the guys that do the announcing. They're fine. But we just need at least, if you're going to keep them in the game, add something else. Add some sideline stuff. Add a different crew to certain games. Like, just add something new to the game. Because announcing is such a big part of sports. And a lot of people that play this game and they play it from a franchise mode perspective, the announcers are a big deal. And it's just year after year, the same lines. The same stale commentary we need something to be refreshed in this area it's just getting way too old and number five on the worst list are the changes that were made to ultimate team that now make it harder to be a no money spent player now of course it's early and things they do throughout the year could change this and make it easier but right now for day one some of the things they've put in place with the new mutt level the new xp system and other things are making it a lot harder to grind a free team than in years past where i thought they were actually doing a better job with that over the last couple years so there needs to be a place for no money spent players and right now it definitely seems a lot tougher on those guys to start the year that's it for my review check out some of these other videos up here on screen and i'll see you guys next time